So this is the school uh, in Mubisi. It's a, it's a technical college uh, where they do a lot of farming and yeah, they do a lot of growing of vegetables and so on and you'll learn more about that through the stories. Yeah. There are 10 students there doing the project. Yeah, no, very different kind of setup <clears throat> than, than Australian schools. No, no computers. A uh, few of them have, had, have phones, but most of the students, uh, none of them have used cameras. Okay, how Hakaraka to Iha is called a Cabramat High School, Tenser Hatene Katak, Iha Timor Leste, Iha Bud Balloon with Special Teptevis, Kuli, Iha Cultura. Tamba Iha Cultura, Iha Timor Leste, Emma, Prende, or in Sama, respect to Malu, Hadomi Malu. Eva here was part of the very first first photo friendship. Eva, what did you learn when you when you got the pictures back from Australia when you were involved in photo friendship? What did you like seeing? What was interesting? Yeah, I was really interesting to see because education in, in my country and Australia is really different. And I see a lot of kids like they have computer in their classrooms and a lot of advice. But in my country, like there's only just on the table and chair. Mm -hmm. So we, that was really like, oh my God, is that the outside world? In some places we've been to, um, outside of Dili, you know, it's the first photos they've got of their family members. Like they don't have any photos except what they've taken for this project, yeah. you know. Um, or which hasn't seen a camera. Yeah, so, so <laughs> yeah. it's also record keeping for their family. So it goes beyond, you know, their own yeah. lives into the lives around, you know. We, we take it for granted that we've got a million mm. photos of mm. stuff. What I wanted to say is that we really, um, are grateful for this opportunity to get to know you but of course what you share what you choose to share and what you choose not to share is completely up to you in this and you know I'm, I'm it's very important to us the photo friendship team that people understand that they own their own stories uh, and that um, you know you, you really this is a, an opportunity to share what you want to and to also keep private what you want to really you know we want you to enjoy it and just share as much as you feel comfortable sharing. I decided to be part of the project since it was an opportunity I could just you know grab since not many my whole life I've been very shy to get like you know new feels for everything um, missing out lots of opportunities so I just thought this is something I could just grab. Yeah, I would really love to meet them because I wanted to know where, like, how they interact firstly and, like, how they live the day to day compared to us. I wanted to be able to connect with the people from East Timor. I don't know much about East Timor, so I wanted to, you know, to get um, an aspect of their lifestyle and, like, how they live and stuff. We can both learn something from each other. If you go to Delhi and you compare it to Sydney, it's a very poor place. But then if you go from the districts and compare the districts to Delhi, there's another divide as well. I, I don't know the exact statistics, but I believe the literacy rate you know, in Delhi may be around 70, 75%, but you go into the districts and it's 25%. got so many stories to tell, but not the means to tell it. It's not a, a country where they have art at school, they don't have literature, you know, they haven't got the opportunity to express themselves. So that's a really important contribution I think we can make, is that, you know, about their identity and thinking about that and what they want to do for the future. The other big part of it was for Australians to learn about their closest neighbour through through stories that are told by the kids themselves. One of the most memorable rounds we did was when we were up in Hatabaliko. You couldn't get more isolated. It's right up in the middle of Timor, up, up at the foot of the highest mountain. Actually, it's so high, it gets cold there in the evening. You know, so it's a very poor community. They're all subsistence farmers. The kids in the school, Often some of them were walking two hours to school each way. We give them the cameras, we didn't know what was, you know, gonna come back. 
one of the most powerful ones I remember both of us were like. I remember the one of the um, somebody's grandfather that was lying down and couldn't uh, he couldn't walk. He's just laying there to get him to a hospital because nobody's got cars. They'd have to carry him for, for, for four hours to get to a hospital. But what, what was also very special is I could have gone to their house, but I wouldn't have got those photos because why they got that intimacy is because they're taking the photos themselves of their families. <laughs>